Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now today I am going to be planting up a like small bog planter. So um, as you might have seen in my, some of my previous videos, I've got a few um, like creative bog planters. So my um, first one that I ever made and my most impressive is this bunny bog planter, which I planted up in July last year. So this is only a year old and it's established wonderfully. The heather that's in it as well is also flowering at the moment, which gives it a really nice like wild looking um, effect. So I'm gonna be making something like that um, up today. So I've had a couple of people um, ask me how I made that up. Um, obviously some people find it quite nice um, about what I do with the bog planters, obviously when planting them up and um, you know how I go about doing it. So I thought I'd make a video of it and just make another small um, one to add to my collection because I like doing it, I like being creative and finding new ways how to incorporate um, what I love with the carnivorous plants into something creative. So I have made a few things for this one. So this one I've got like, I've made this little trellis out of like cocktail sticks and stuff. Um, and I'm just gonna plant it up with a few odd things that I've got laying around and see what I can create. So I haven't planned this one, usually I do plan them or at least um, have kind of an idea of what I'm doing as I'm planting it up. But I've just decided to um, yeah, see what happens and um, take you along with it. Okay, so before I begin um, building or making the one I'm about to do, I just thought I'd show um, the three planters that I've got or creative plants that I've got um, in a bit more detail. Um, so I do have two bog barrels outside, but these are my nice little mini ones I've made just for like decorations inside the greenhouse. So these are just typical fly traps, and the reason obviously it's called bunny bog is because it's got this bunny statue in it. Um, now this was just a very plain and simple um, planter. If I do have pictures, but I don't know where they are. Um, but if I find any pictures, I'll definitely put them over the top of this because this was so simple and minimalistic and I just let it kind of grow wild so I never put any of this moss in here. This heather just came up as a weed and I kept it in there. So it was very simplistic but now it's established really well and obviously got really nice colour. Um, the second one I've got is this sundew cottage. So um, this is just a simple again sundew cottage because it's mainly sundews in here um, and there's a little cottage on the top so this one again is just nice um, sundews on a hill which I've then planted some pygmy sundews and some small um, subtropical species like um, Jorosa spatulata um, all around the hill like this and you can kind of see some of them in there some of them are quite hard to spot now but they're all coming out on the hill and then this again was a tiny little fern which has grown into this massive big bush and then down here is a little seed corner and then the third one which is the most recent one I planted up is this pygmy sundew planter so this one doesn't have a special name but it's all um, pygmy sundews so this is um, Drosia polchella and then this one at the back here and here is Drosia rosanna and um, as you can see they have grown really nicely like the dew on them is amazing and they're all flowering unfortunately they've stopped flowering for the day the flowers only last for a couple of hours but they all flowered today which you can see have just closed and it's such an amazing display again I'll, if I've got a picture of um, all of them in flower I'll put it over this video but that's kind of what I'm going to be doing so something quite simplistic but just kind of makes that extra impact rather than just obviously plain um, sun juice and all that in a pot Okay, so basically to start off, all you would need is just a pot. So a pot any size, whatever um, you know you want to put yours in. As, as you probably saw, um, the three different planters that I've done before all had different size pots and different kind of pots. But for this one, I'm just going to go for a standard. This is a three litre pot. Um, so preferably with drainage holes if you can, um, just obviously to help the water. And then obviously, once you've got your pot, um, fill it up with a I'm gonna go for a peat and perlite mix because then it's um helpful for you know kind of a range of whatever I put in here just to be on the safe side so first of all I'm just going to fill this pot up to the top with peat and perlite and then I'm going to um, water it so it's nice and moist ready for planting okay so I have now um, filled the pot with um, my soil mixture and um, 
moistened it so I'll start adding stuff in. Um, so I've got a few bits down here. So I've got the trellis which I showed earlier. Um, made this little bird bath as well which I've decorated and painted. And I've got a little bird statue which I'm going to put in there as well. So this is kind of um, like a wild bird garden kind of thing I've got going on here. Um, some of the little decorations I've put I've simply um, made them out of like um, cardboard sticks or anything like that I could find and then I have painted them and then sealed them. So I sealed them with a waterproof um, like sealant because when I put them in here obviously the bog plant is going to need to stay moist and put carnivorous plants in here so I need to one make sure it's not going to leach stuff into the soil and two if I'm using stuff like cardboard which I've made this out of I don't want it to obviously just go soggy and collapse because that obviously won't be any good um, so I did that with the bridge of the sundry cottage that was made out of cardboard as well which I've sealed and that's been in there for a few months now and that hasn't collapsed it never went soggy so I'm quite happy with that hence why I've done it again um, obviously when playing around with stuff like this and you're obviously using carnivorous plants um, you need to be careful things not to leach into the soil so if you're using stones or any other decorative stuff you don't want um, it to leach stuff in the soil yeah that never really seemed to um, bother with the stones that I've put in the um, bunny bog um, that's obviously did really well so I guess just play around really these are all very experimental when I do them anyway I um, never you know really plan or anything um, to be perfect and I do change around planting and um, the other ones I haven't changed I've just kind of like them being wild which is the whole plan I got for this one as well um, so I'll stop just talking and actually start doing something um, so I'm going to stick this trellis in first so I've made it a bit longer just so um, it'll stay in here I don't want to move it about so wherever I put it um, I kind of want it to be it's like last resting place if I do I have to put it on an angle? I won't put it on an angle. I'm going to stick it about here. Just make sure it's in line. Obviously fit fiddly things like this can be quite hard. So I'm going to go down to that line. All right. Which isn't too bad actually. I didn't expect it to be that good. Um, it's kind of works quite nice. It's quite short which has actually worked quite well um, and then I'm going to put this bird to the side of it so I'm just going to place it I think on the soil I might just dig out a little bit of the soil to place it in um, like that and just place it round with the bunny that I put in the other um, bunny bog when I um, place it in the moss eventually overgrew it so all the stuff that's in there is now really hard to get out so I wouldn't obviously go and mess it up anyway but um, hopefully moss and all that will start growing over this as well and then I'd have to put the bird bath in now or I should put it in like a little bit later so if I put it so if say I had that as the front and then I guess I'd put it on this kind of angle like that so if that was the angle you're looking in on it isn't too bad um before i put that in though i might just put stuff in some stones and stuff around it and then kind of place it in afterwards okay, so now i'm going to place some stones um just like in a little pathway looking theme so um the stones that i've got are um part of sharp them um, some sharp sand so i've um sifted out the sand and um you have all the large stones left so i'm just going to Place them. I've used sharp sand in a few of my drosera mixes before um, and I haven't had any bad results so I know that's um, hopefully safe. I've used it in a few other pots as well before. So um, like I said I try to avoid stuff that will leach minerals into um, the soil but like I said it all everything that I'm doing is always um, purely experimental. I don't usually do it because um, you know it's for anything. I do it purely because I um, am doing it for fun and obviously if it doesn't work then I will change it and I always use plants that I've got more than one of obviously to help just in case I um, ever lose one from doing something like this but so far it's been alright. 
but yeah these stones are still quite wet because I've washed them again even though they're already washed um, so I've um, washed them out with distilled water just to help but I'm just going to make this little pathway under the trellis I think and just um, start it there like I said I'm just kind of making it up as I go along um, but yeah I'm going to put some here and I'm going to have it like wider here and then trailing off to the other side so for now I'm going to have something like that before I start filling or putting any plants in I think I might just add um, some moss and I've got this stick which I might just put at the back actually um, maybe to make it look like more of like a either like a woodland thing or maybe even a seating area um, obviously if you're imagining walking through that maybe there's a tree that's fallen over I'm not really sure I'm just going with that because it might look nice um, obviously I can change it about once planted and I've just gone over and stripped a load of um, moss from my pots because luckily it grows in almost everything so I've just stripped it from some Jerusha pots and I'm going to put it around here um, like I said before the um, bunny bog planter that um, I did last year never I never even put any moss in it um, it all grew from well just from in the soil but I'm gonna put it in this one because it obviously it'll help speed up having moss in here um, the moss in the bunny bog now is about I would say a good inch or so thick but I think it'll look nice if it starts growing around this bird because obviously the um, ornament itself already has like some grassy mossy patches um, so if I continue to put this round here like this then I think that would look really nice so I've cut off all the moss spores as well I'm just digging the soil out a bit just to place it in um, I'll see any gaps I've got I can either fill in with stone or just leave I actually might just leave um, a couple of gaps in here um, and stuff will go around so I might put some small plant because I've always put again moss around um, plants but if I just I said I don't want this to go on for too long because obviously you get the idea that I'm just putting moss around um, this but Obviously just so you get the pure idea of it. Which I think I'll just add, um, I might add some more actually after I do some planting because if I've got a plant here um, then I can start adding stuff around so that's what I'm going to move on to next um, is some planting. Next I'm, well I say next, um, I'm going to place I think a clump, I've got these um, young baby drosera which I did from flower stalk cuttings of drosera um, and I've got quite a few of them so I think I'm going to start with quite young plants in this and then see how well they establish from them because instead of putting loads of big plants in here which probably won't um, fit as well I'm going to use young plants and then obviously if they do get too big and messy then um, obviously I'll move them so I'm going to take this out just for now I'm going to put it just here um, behind the bird and next to the trellis. So first of all I'm going to start by just making a kind of hull and pushing the soil out a bit with this paintbrush and then I'm going to try and get a clump of these again I'm going to use the paintbrush to try and lift them out so I don't know what the root systems are like on these because obviously they are propagation material so if I just try and lift, I don't know how many I'm going to be able to lift out at once So I don't want to be, you can be quite rough with these, they're quite hardy, plus they're in sphagnum moss as well, which isn't helping. Um, in peat they're quite easy to take out, so if I just gently push it down like that, there you go. So even though it looked quite rough, and I do handle my plants quite roughly, um, especially these ones because I've got so many of them, so it doesn't matter how um, I go about it. But as you can see, um, they've still got the dew on. There is plenty of root system on there, which I'm not actually surprised about that root system. Um, there's four, yeah, there's four plants there. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm going to keep them as this cluster here, and then just gently post them down into the soil, and obviously 
pack it around. So if I wanted now, I could in theory put some more moss around here um, and it will cover this quite nicely. But I don't think I will actually. I think I'll leave it and let the moss grow naturally. Um, so that's my cluster and I'm going to put this stick. I think I have it this way. Back. Like that. So that fits there quite nicely. So if I bring it back round to this side, you can see that that's at the back. So when that grows quite big, it actually might look quite nice. Um, I've lifted this bird up a bit if you haven't noticed already. Um, I didn't like it sinking, I decided to lift it up and place it up there. Um, I might use a small spatulata here um, as I've got the gap. I think I'm going to add the bird bar just for scale. Well, just to help me think of my plan placing now. So I think I might add this just outside. Like that. Which isn't too bad actually, yeah. Um, so I was going to put this fly trap in here. It's one of my, again, um, this is my, it was from a leaf um, pulling that I did of a fly trap last year. And it's remained in this quite clustered um, growth. So I might put it at the front, but I haven't decided yet. So I think I'm going to put the rest of the drosera in. Okay, same process as I did before. Um, <clears throat> this is a spatulata that I did from a leaf cutting. Um, which is in with my banata and same process as um, the capensis I'm just going to put the paintbrush down quite deep into the soil so I can hopefully scoop it up from the roots and slowly push out again this is in sphagnum moss so it doesn't help and just kind of push it so there's not really I guess technique I have had a couple of people ask about um, dry for repotting and taking them out of soil um, I've never like done it by a technique I just kind of as long as the roots are intact and I don't destroy the plant then it's fine so I just kind of do that and then gently tease it out obviously if it's stuck keep trying to take it from the bottom to make sure you get all the roots you don't want to break them that's an old leaf of that banana so this has got quite long roots already again from just being a pulling so there you go so just de gently teasing it out and I've got a very long root on that so I might remove some of the moss that was around it, push that back down there. And see what obviously I've got. Well, without destroying the actual plant. So look, there's already that might be another one there. Next one, I should have just noticed like a little baby, which I'll keep that with that. So I'm gonna put it here. So again make a deep enough hole because um, these drosferas do have quite long roots especially for their size and then just gonna make that a little bit deeper so as long as you obviously get the plant and the root into the soil obviously gently push it down using obviously you could use a dibber or your hands or however obviously you would normally go about planting about trying to get any mess on the dew. Obviously these um, sun dews are a little bit harder when it comes to planting because obviously they've got so much dew on them. So instead of pushing that down any further I might just get some more soil and slowly like post it under but then again it might get quite dewy so if I just do that put the soil here Actually, it might be best to put some moss around that. No, or not, actually, it's, it's alright. So there, there you go, that's not too bad. I could put some um, moss around that to go with the bird, but eventually it might just be eaten by the moss anyway. But, um, yeah, so now I'll do some more planting on this side. But I just added some um, bit more moss, so I did end up adding some moss around the spatulata and I only added like some odd tufts of moss around the bird bath but that is just, um, I'm hoping that the moss will grow and hold it in place a bit because it doesn't have supports like this trellis does um, the same with the birds, I feel like they're going to fall over if I move this um, but I'll see I wasn't going to add the fly trap because I know that if it starts growing upright PTLs, which eventually it will um, then it might get a bit big, but I think I am just purely because it's going to be nice to put in there. So I'm just going to take all these 
bits of plants out. Um, so it's not really the right time of year to be repotting a fly trap. It's usually best done in the um, yeah, winter, later months, um, when they go into dormancy. But I'm just going to do it because um, I mean I did the um, bunny bog in July last year, and um, the only thing that happens then they just grow a bit slower, so it didn't grow as good as um, they usually would. Actually, I'm going to taste that Do it that way. So if anything, it just means this one might be quite slow, but as it's quite young, then um, it might not be too bad. So I'm just going to, I've just taken out the pot, I'm just going to gently split the pot. That rhizome's quite nice on this one actually. First time I've looked at it, because I've never repotted this from when I took it from its leaf um, pulling. So. That's it. Yes, yeah, so this is its um, rhizome. Look how white and healthy that is. That looks lovely. Um, yeah, there's actually a couple of plants there as well. So this is the fly trap, and again, quite a long root system. So I'm going to put that here. So uh, the traps might close while um, I'm planting itself. So if you're um, planting a fly trap, then you might have traps that close. Um, nothing to worry about, they'll reopen afterwards. Like I said, this one might now grow a little bit um, different, or it might not grow um, that well, it might grow quite slowly. But um, again, it's nothing to worry about. Once it goes through its dormancy in the winter, it will um, pick up and then grow again next year. So yeah, actually, planting this now is a lot bigger, I guess, than I thought. But, like I said, if it grows um, too too much, which I think it will now, um, then I could always change it up. I'm not sure really how big that's going to grow. I'll just get some more soil. I'm just kind of improvising as I put it round. So I just want that in the soil a bit more. And then place some more peat around it, obviously not burying all the leaves and make sure the centre is still there. So as you saw before it was quite clustered but taking it out um, it has got some longer petals because it was just so buried before. So yeah it's not looking actually the best fly trap but at the same time like I said it will start growing round. Um, if I just separate these eating it eating itself now. <laughs> and that's a fly trap. So again, it doesn't actually look like great when putting in it. It looked really nice when it was in that cluster. But um, it's not too bad. Like I said, everything will grow and colour up. So I just need one more thing I think I'll put in there. I'm not sure if I'll put anything in the back after the side on that. So now I'm just going to put something here. I was going to put, I was thinking about like something really small like pygmy sundews or more spatulata. But I'm going to go for these young um, Gerosa alicea. So... This was one adult that died down over winter and has come back and has got three um, plants. So I'm going to try and divide that up now. So I'm going to just take, I think I'll just take the whole thing out of the pot. Alright, so it's all kind of falling apart as I'm here, but I'm just going to divide that up. They don't really have that much... Um, in the way of roots, actually. Um, I think the spatulata had longer roots than that. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to um, divide these three plants, but I'm going to start off by just finding a growth point. So you can see underneath where um, there's like bits of growth points. I'm going to try and take one of them off. So I'm going to start by just simply slowly trying to pull it away which I would show on camera but it's just a bit fiddly okay so I have just um, taken one off and then I've got these other two here so I'm gonna as you can see that I've actually there might be more because like I said it's kind of split so I'm gonna just um, take all this dead stuff off before planting so I've just um, taken all the dead off of them I'm gonna keep it as two these two seem to be um, obviously more attached than the other one was. The other one came apart quite easily. These two want to stay together. So I'm going to place them 
here. So I just make a big enough hole, move the bits out the way. So obviously it's got one really long adult root, which is going to be quite hard to get down down there because it's gone um, very woody, where the others are quite um, flexible. But if I just push it down this hole here, and then obviously, there you go, that's easier coming in. Obviously it's quite hard, um, some people like put bags over them, these are quite small. Um, but they put bags over them to um, stop all the dew coming off. Oh, is that a root? Yeah, it is. Whoops. Just place up back down there. And then move the dirt around it. Oh, so this is the bit where you get the most because at the same time my hands are still covered in obviously dirt. And, and now I'm trying to push it down. So if I just uh, fix that off camera and then I'll return after it's finished. So I've just planted up that um, alicia and managed to get on, um, well, down into the pot without obviously um, getting too much um, peat on it. Um, I wasn't going to add anything at the back, but I um, just saw this uticula um, bisquamata, um, and there was a bigger clump in there, which I've just divided this bit here, because um, I thought it would just be quite sweet. It's like a solo kind of stalk or flower in there, and maybe it will spread. Um, so yeah, when I planted this it didn't really have much to it, but look, it's got some nice little roots there. So if I just, um, again make a little hole for that, and I might just put it here, and then maybe it will spread, maybe it won't. Um, but if I just move some of the peat out of the way, I'm just going to use my hand for quickness, and then place it down. And pack obviously the soil around it. But then I think it'll look, yeah, quite nice because then you could look at it through the trellis without obviously um, too much at the back going on, which I think is quite nice. So it kind of looks like a solo flower, like um, maybe on a journey or a quest or something like that. I just really like doing this kind of stuff, as you could probably see. Um, so I'm not, like I said, I've never been the most creative person, I guess. Like, I just like getting involved with all this kind of stuff. I like drawing, painting, um, and incorporating all that with, obviously, my passion for carnivorous plants. So that has come together quite well, just using a few different carnivorous plants. So I think I'm going to leave it like that. So I could have added more. I could add more moss, because um, even from like, all the pots, I've got all this kind of moss. But I am just going to leave it like that because I want the moss to kind of spread and let it go around the plants naturally. Obviously with this spatulata I did put the moss around it. But with the Elysiae, even at the back here, I could add some moss. But I'm hoping that maybe will spread. This is the finished um, planter. So as you can see, I've got the fly trap which I planted at the front. The spatulata um, and the bird here. The capensis at the back with that you took an arrow bisque, um, bisque mater, and an elysia obviously with my decorative bit so it's obviously nothing um, exceptionally fancy at the same time it still creates an impact it's better than obviously them just being in a single pot and when it starts growing when they start growing obviously I could maybe change some spits around I'm just going to keep it see how wild it gets um, I was going to potentially put some maybe those heathers um, either side um, which come up in my plant um, planters as like weeds and maybe use the actual trellis itself and, tra and train it to um, go up there but for now I'm going to leave it like this I think it looks quite nice I was going to add more moss but I want it to um, incorporate it and find itself around the rest of the plants um, obviously I'm going to keep it in a tray of water um, at all times to keep it moist and um, yeah, it should do quite well, so hopefully it'll establish and I'll be able to update you in the next video um, and see how everything's growing. But thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.